In this tutorial, we'll be talking about how to get polygons that are in the same plane to render the way that you want them to. We'll first be going over a transform-based approach, which will illustrate, illustrate the problem, and then we'll be talking about how to, how to do it in a shader using the offset command. Now, ideally, you won't have to use either of these techniques because each one has uh, small drawbacks. Um, they're not too serious, but they do exist. Um, so if you don't have to use either, um, and you can model or texture to get the same effect, then you should do so. But sometimes that would introduce too much um, in the way of alpha channel blending or too much geometry. And on the iPhone, those are both good to avoid. So these are techniques that you should know about. So what we have are two planes, standard unity planes. One of them is scaled up. And they exist in the same plane. We want this one to rent, appear that it's rendering um, not in front of, it's still in the same plane, but we want to see all of it and we don't want the other thing in the same plane to obscure it. You can think of this as a decal, um, could be like a blood splat or bullet mark or something on the wall or something less violent, some flowers and kitty cat wallpaper. <laughs> but we're just using these four colors for now. So as long as we're in perspective, I'm sorry, if, as long as we're in an isometric view, then what we're doing now is a good approach. And what that is, is actually faking everything by moving the smaller mesh ever so slightly forward, 0 0.01 in Z. And that's close enough that small enough that we can't even tell that it's not the same plane. These lines appear to um, in, they appear to be the same line um, here and there and we're not able to see any space between so that's good as long as we are in isometric view and as long as we're close it works in perspective view as well there's you know aliasing going on here stair stepping but we do have a, a proper line and if we look at it from the side then we can't tell that it's pushed forward but the problem comes in when we get a little bit farther away. Right about there. So this is what's known as Z-fighting. And what's happening is each of these meshes is writing their pixels to the depth buffer. So it doesn't matter which one is writing first. The second mesh has to depth test against pixels um, that are in this very, very similar um, places that its own pixels are in the depth buffer. So you're going to have the depth test like randomly, based on viewing angle, um, failing or succeeding. So we're, we want to be having the color green here. So right here, we have the depth test succeeding, and we're seeing green. But we have it failing where there are little, sp little spots of blue. So what we can do, of course, is to move that a little bit farther forward and then as we move it takes a lot longer to move farther away to see that effect and the reason that you don't see it up close but you see it farther away is that the depth buffer has a lot more precision near the near clip plane of the camera so right about there I start to see some Z fighting issues and if that was big enough to me that it's it's a problem I might want to increase that ever so slightly more so I tested this before. I did not see any Z fighting results. Everything was too small to be noticeable when it was at point two. So now we'll zoom in. And, you know, there's no Z fighting as we move closer and closer. But the problem now is that we have what looks like a broken line here. You can see blue, like a blue connection there. And that is because, of course, it's pushed forward and it's far enough forward that if we're close to the mesh, meshes, we can see space in between. Now, if this is okay for your game, um, then this might be the technique you want to go, go with, and I've seen some people use this for, the, uh, for decals. Because if it's impossible for your character to get, or whatever, your camera to get that close to the wall, and you don't have straight lines like this that make it really apparent that they're not really in the same plane, that it might work out. And in the scene view, the problem is exacerbated because you can't control the near and the far clip planes of the camera. When you're working with your own scene, 
you can push the near clip plane farther away and the far clip plane closer and then you'll get a lot more precision um, throughout your camera range. So the scene view, of course, is designed so that you can see things um, all over your scene. It's not optimized um, like you would your own game, because the scene view doesn't know exactly what you want to see, what you need to see from any angle. So it's not settable. So that is one technique that might work, but the drawback, of course, is that they're not actually in the same plane, and in perspective especially, that really becomes apparent. So, what we can do um, in a simple shader, let's go ahead and turn this, uh, so that they make this uh, zero, so that they are now really in the same plane, and that we're getting Z fighting from all distances. Because those values are exactly, it should be exactly the same, so it's just random which, which uh, mesh you get to see. So, what we're actually doing is using one shader for the larger mesh, one in the background, and we're going to call that no offset. It is opening. Okay, so we're just taking a texture, which is this, and it's kind of dark, 50% values for red, green, blue, and white, and we're going to combine texture double just to get the full brightness effect so it's a little bit easier to see. And then we'll take another shader called offset, and to start off with, we will do this. We'll say Z test always, which means that you're not performing a depth test anymore in the uh, shader you're using. So if we go to drag offset onto the smaller mesh, initially it won't make any difference. And the reason this is not making a difference is obviously that the mesh, um, this smaller mesh that's using that um, z-test always is writing first and then they set the larger mesh comes second and it's still performing a depth test against the smaller mesh so we don't help the problem at all but if we were to add a Q so we'll say tags and Q equals transparent then we have the larger mesh in the background rendering first, then the smaller mesh rendering, and it is not performing a depth test, so even though they're in the same plane, there's not a Z-fighting issue, because it's completely overwriting all the pixels that it would be writing on screen, no matter what's in front or what's behind it. And, of course, that's a problem when you have a mesh that is supposed to be in front of it in space, and it's covering that up. Behind, it's no big deal. It, as long as you have the Z-test always is fine as long as you have something that's right in the front of everything, but as soon as you move something forward, then you have a problem. So Z-test always is not the solution in a shader. Although it can be helpful, especially in a 2D game um, for other things, this is not the solution here. So we'll go into the actual solution offset in the next video.